Welcome back to the third and last part of this tutorial. So as we have now tracked the whole clip, animated everything in the way we want it and also in a very natural way, thanks to eye expressions, we can now start with the tricky part, which will be to add some light or in this case to add some shadows to make this look more realistic. So because if we go back to our breakfast table comp, to the main comp, you can see that it already looks quite good but you can still see that this element doesn't belong to the rest of the clip because we are simply missing the shadow. But how can we achieve that it looks like there is some shadow on the table and on the wall? And the easiest way is to simply project some shadow on the table and on the wall. And to do that we have to somehow build a small 3D scene which represents the table and the wall. And we do this in a very easy way by just adding two layers, one for the table and one for the wall. And then we have to position a light. So let's get started. At first we need a new solid and we can get one by hitting Control Y. And let's make this one white and we call it table. And we hit OK. And let's directly make this guy 3D. If you can't see this 3D switch over here, can't see the 3D switch over here, you just have to click on this toggle switches. Okay, now let's make the table 3D. And when we hit the W button, we can rotate it. Now the tricky part is to somehow guess the right perspective. To make this a bit easier, you can just apply the grid effect to your solid. In this way, you just can see it a bit better. Let's hit the toggle transparency grid button. So now we somehow want to try to bring this in the same perspective as our table. And we have to scale this one up a bit, maybe bring it a bit more down and something like this looks just fine for me. Now we can simply duplicate it by hitting Control D, call this one wall, go into our transform properties and simply hit the reset button. Now we have it flat again and we can drag it back in, into the depth and reposition this one. And if we have done this really rough and quick, we can go over here to our perspectives and go to the top view. Now you can see this red square represents our table and this one is our wall. So we can see that we have to bring this a bit closer together so that they really line up. And now we can go into a side view, maybe the left side. And we want to bring them as close together as possible. Okay, this looks quite good for me. So let's go back to our active camera view. And we can turn off the grid effect for now. And the next thing we want to do is we want to bring this wall and the table under our circle and make the circle itself 3D. Okay, now you can't really see that all of this is 3D because we don't have a real 3D perspective in After Effects. And to get one, we simply create a new layer, new camera. We can just take the defaults for now because we just take this camera as a little helper for us. Because if we now hit the C button, we can orbit around in 3D and there we see our small simulation of this 3D world. We just quickly disable the motion blur because everything will be faster now. You can see 
that the whole movement is now in 3D space. And now we can position everything a bit better, select both of those layers and bring them up until they interact with our circle. Just like that. And we can always go back into the front view by simply resetting the camera. There we are. Okay, and to get the shadow we have to create a new light. So let's do this. Layer, new, light. And we can leave all of this at the defaults and go into all of those settings later. The only thing you have to be aware is that the light has to cast shadows. And we hit OK. And you can directly see what's happening. We get a really hard shadow over here and also our white layers are reacting to the light. But let's just do a few changes here and then everything will look way better, I promise. So in the moment when we enable the 3D switch, we also get material options for our 3D layers. So let's quickly go into there and we have a few options here. Of course it doesn't need to cast shadows and we want it to accept shadows. But we don't want this layer to accept lights. So you can see that we have this hotspot over here and it gets darker. The further the light goes away, we don't want that. So accept lights off. Perfect. And the same thing for our wall. Doesn't need to cast shadows. It has to accept shadows, but no light. Okay. Now we go into our circle composition. Material options. And this guy should cast shadows. But it doesn't need to accept shadows and it doesn't need to accept lights. Now we can just play around a bit with our shadow settings that this shadow looks a bit more realistic. To do that we go into our light properties. And we can play a bit with the shadow darkness and also the diffusion of the shadow. And you can directly see that this looks pretty cool. But of course still not the way we want this to look. Because everything is white and we don't want this to be white because we want to see our footage. But how can we do that? Hmm. Keying out the white? Hmm. Not the best solution. Maybe the best solution is to simply change the blending modes. So we click on this toggle switches again, go to our blending modes and click on multiply. And now everything that has been white is now transparent. And you can directly see that it would be nice to also create a layer for this box here and maybe also for the cup and the toaster to make this look way more realistic. But for now we just leave it at those two walls here. And now we can also turn on our motion blur again and also for the circle and go back into a breakfast table composition. And let me just quickly make a ramp preview. Okay, you can directly see that this looks a thousand times more realistic than without the shadow. And of course we have to work on this, maybe make the surface area in Mocha already a bit bigger or maybe play a bit with the light settings so that the shadow doesn't get all the way up here. So let me just quickly show you how you can do this. In the pre-comp of course you can always click on the light and everything reacts automatically to the light because everything is in 3D, all our material options are set properly 
So now you can also take a look on the light directions of your shot, on the shadow darkness and diffusion. And make all of this look very realistic. This is how I tracked the shot and how I animated it with, believe it or not, just two keyframes. And how I created this cool looking shadow projection. And just to give this one a final look, let's just go back into our breakfast table composition. And you may have noticed that I have the shy switch enabled. So let me just click on this and I explain you what this button is for. And you can directly see that there are a few more layers showing up. And that's just to keep your compositions organized because all those layers you don't want to use or you, you don't want to see all the time because they are maybe just guide layers. So you can always click the shy button for them. And if you click the shy button over here, they just disappear and you just have to handle with the compositions and layers that are necessary for the composition. But let me just show you what I did to create a final look. Because when I did this whole animation with the lettering saying, start your day with After Effects, I was directly thinking about this 60s, 70s kind of American diner look. And for that you of course need different colors. And I achieved that with a tint effect. And the tint effect simply does what it says. It tints the footage and you can choose a black color. So the new blacks become this color and the new whites become this light blue color. So let me quickly enable this. And you can see what it does. And you can also play with the amount of tint because you normally don't want to overdo everything and have everything blended together with 100. But let me tell you something else. You can also have this at 100 and simply play around with the opacity of this layer because it's an adjustment layer. And for now let's maybe just bring it up to 80. It's a bit much but you can see the effect quite good. Next thing that I want to do is because now everything looks a bit washed out, I simply added another adjustment layer, called this one contrast and brought out some levels over here and I brought in the whites and a bit over here on the blacks and if I turn them on you can see that it's simply more contrast. By the way you can also add more contrast by simply typing in contrast and use the brightness and contrast effect and simply bring up the contrast of this. Or you could even bring out some curves. And what you could do here, you could make everything brighter that is already bright and everything darker that's already dark. And this also helps adding more contrast. So now you have the opportunity to choose which look you want to have. Maybe like so. The next layer I added is simply a vignette layer. It's a black solid where I have drawn a vignette. Just quickly hit the M button twice for all the mask settings. So you can see I have brought out the mask feather really, really high to 440 pixels. When you hit the U button twice, you can see all the parameters that have been changed on this layer. So you can also see that I have played with the opacity and simply brought it down to 20. And this is what this one looks. And for an overall focus, because th this is really just a small focus on the center of all of this where my action is going to happen, I have also created a blur layer. It's also an adjustment layer where I have simply applied the fast blur because the fast blur, as it says, it's the fastest to render. And I have simply copied this mask and pasted it onto this layer so that I could now blur the same part of the picture like I have chosen for the vignette without the blur and with the blur. And you can directly see your view is now going straight to the center of this picture. And this is exactly where the action is going to be.
Okay, and that is everything that I have done with my project. Oh, okay, you may think now, and what about this nice text, this start your day with After Effects that is swinging and wiggling all around. But let me just tell you that this is simply another eye expression you could use and it takes you about one or two minutes to get this whole animation going. And you can also find a tutorial on this technique on mamuworld.com. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would be happy that especially those of you who don't want to use expressions in After Effects that much because they simply think that they are too complicated, that they have enjoyed it and that they think about using eye expressions in the future. So for now I have to say thank you for sharing your time with me and I wish you a lot of fun in After Effects.